Hey everyone, this is Apostle Misha Safti welcoming you to this Tuesday night edition of Studying the Word. Sorry for uh, delaying for a couple of minutes. Um, tonight I want to talk about um, really the topic of, uh, uh, of really what happens when the Christian doesn't do what they're supposed to do, when they really don't do anything. And, um, and so I want to get into um, some scripture that I think will really... Um, maybe help all of us and and bring us into a place of awareness of of the fact that um, we don't we don't enter into the kingdom of God by just sitting uh, through life doing nothing. Okay, God does expect something without us. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. Um, so there, there needs to be a, a works that accompanying that accompany our profession of faith when we ask Christ into our hearts into our lives that, yes, we're not saved by works, but works should accompany that out of our love and obedience and desire to serve the Lord. So we'll open up with prayer. I'll have a few announcements at the end, and we'll get into it. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to bring your message tonight, Lord, your study. And I pray, Lord, that each person, Lord, will will that, that's listening will be able to receive this and Lord, that you'll anoint me to speak it, Lord, in the manner that, Lord, you would have me bring it tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, and I thank you for it. Amen, amen. I, I think about times when I, I, I've pastored churches in the past, and many times people would tell me, well, I'm just waiting on God. I'm sitting here in church, and, and many times it's for years, and I'm just waiting to see what God wants me to do. And the Bible says, you know, we're all we can all do the work of an evangelist. There's always something, folks, that 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 we can do. And there are many that say, well, you know, I don't really have a talent. I can't preach. I, maybe I don't know the word of God. But you know, you have a testimony, and if 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 you can't provide that, you can hand out a track. Uh, you can buy the chick publication tracks, or you can. Uh, make one of your own, or you can just tell people that God loves them, or you can ask people if you can pray for them for anything. You know, that you're a Christian, you you would like to pray for them if they need help. There's always something, folks, you know, but too many um, uh, Christians end up vegetating because they don't do anything, and so they kind of die on the vine. You know, uh, when we go to a gym, we work out because we exercise our muscles, and in exercising our muscles, we gain strength and conditioning. But if we don't do anything at all, and we never exercise, and we never do anything, those muscles atrophy, and, and they don't work. Uh, we end up spraining them, we end up tearing them, we end up hurting ourselves. And when we do try to do anything physical, because we're not conditioned. And there are many Christians today that are sitting in churches, and they're not conditioned. They're out of spiritual condition. And so they wonder, why is it that things aren't working for me? Why am I not breaking through in my relationship with the Lord? Why am I not receiving healing? Why do I not get deliverance? Um, why isn't God more real to me? Uh, why are my prayers not answered? And folks, I think that sometimes the Lord is waiting for us to get into motion. There's an old saying that you can't steer a parked car. And I think that God is looking to see us uh, begin to take a step because the word says that if we draw near to him, he'll draw near to us. Uh, he had, he did what he needed to do when he went to the cross. He shed his blood. He was beaten, you know, for our healing and his blood was shed for the remission of our sins and for reconciliation between us and God the Father. But folks, at this point, then, okay, it's important for us not to only go forward and make a profession of the faith that we believe that he's the son of God. And, and I don't belittle that. That's important. But the Lord is waiting then for us to act on this and move on it. And so I'm going to give a scripture. It's maybe one that uh, some of you have heard, but uh, and, and maybe others really haven't, haven't taken a look at this, maybe in the way that they should. But I'm praying tonight that you'll actually read this with me and pay close attention to the wording. Even if you've heard this before and you say, yeah, I know the story, stop for a minute and just read the words and let's kind of break this down for a minute and then see how this applies to you and ask yourself the question, am I really doing all that I could do? You know, I like to uh, watch these 
uh, near-death experiences where people actually do die. And they go to the, maybe in the operating room or in other places, and they're dead sometimes for 20 minutes or so or more. And, and during that time, many visit hell and others visit heaven or talk with the Lord. And the question that's often asked is, what did you do with my name or with me while you were on the earth? And I do believe that God has placed us on this earth, and this earth is a testing ground for where we spend eternity. And you have to ask yourself, am I passing the test this evening? And I think we should all ask ourselves that question. If there's a question in your mind, if I were to die tonight, okay, could I say 100% positive that I would be with the Lord in heaven? And you're still wondering, well, I think I would, but I'm not sure I would. Then you have to ask yourself, well, why are you not sure you would? Is there sin, unconfessed sin? Or is it because you know that you really haven't been walking with him and, and, and giving him your all in all? And that's what God wants. He, want, he doesn't want some of you. He wants all of you. It's not what you can do, as somebody once said to me when I was a young minister uh, growing into ministry. It's not what you can do. God wants you. And uh, folks, that, that's really where it's at. Does he have all of you? And if he does, there ought to be accompanying actions that show that. So let's uh, read this scripture. And we're going to read from the book of Matthew and beginning in uh, chapter 25, verse 14. Matthew 25, 14. And I'm reading out of the New King James version today. Maybe some of you have the King James or other translations, uh, but if you'll follow along, you should be able to read well enough to be able to follow uh, the uh, scriptures that we're reading, okay? Um, so I'm going to, to read this first, and maybe I'll stop and do kind of an expository on this, or maybe I'll just keep going and then uh, come back and hit on the points that I, I feel are important. Okay, so again, turn to Matthew chapter 25 with me and begin in verse 14. And I really pray that you'll listen to this, folks, because this could be the key for breakthrough for some of you that are having problems breaking through. And, and so let's, let's look at it, okay? For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. And when he had received and, and he who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and made another five talents. And likewise he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground, and he hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came. Think about that. The Lord of those servants came. And relate that to the Lord of our lives returning one day. We know it's imminent that Christ will return. When he does return, and he analyzes and looks into our lives, what will he see? Okay, this is the question that we want to think about as we read this. So, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came, and he settled accounts with, with them, with all three of them. So, he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents, look, I have gained five more talents besides them. So he took the five and converted them to ten. His Lord said to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful for a few things, or over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look. I've gained two more talents besides them. So he took two and he converted them into four. So he replicated those talents into four talents. He said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I've gained two more besides them. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful 
over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you've not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Look, <clears throat> there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has more will be given and and, and he will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Folks, I really hope that you understand what happened because you see, there are many Christians that have taken what God has given them. Now we can put it into the physical terms of a talent. In this case, it was a, a talent was like a coin. But let's just say God has given you a actual literal talent. He has given you something to do. Maybe you play the piano. Maybe you sing. Um, there's always something you can do. Maybe you're a good landscaper or or or, or something, and and, and 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 you could do some work in you know for the Lord. But but God gives you a talent, and folks, there are, there are so many Christians, <clears throat> and <clears throat> that I believe love the Lord, but they've made a fatal mistake in their walk with Him because what they do is say, well, you know, I love the Lord and I'm just occupying. I've heard this term. I'm, we're just occupying and we're just standing still and waiting for his return. We're just kind of holding out until the end, uh, until the Lord returns and raptures us. Meanwhile, though, to me, as I hear them say that, it reminds me of the one guy that took the one talent and basically sat on it and did nothing. He just said, well, you know, I know that the Lord is a very demanding and so I'm not really doing anything. I'm just going to uh, sit on it and make sure nothing, nobody takes it. Nothing bad happens to it. And when he comes back, I'll just give it back to him. That's what you're doing when you don't go out and replicate and use the gifts that God has given you. And folks, there are so many Christians that do this and they're sitting in our churches every Sunday and they're 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 just waiting for the rapture. No, it's, it sounds good. I don't poke fun at this in the sense that, look, I, I'm waiting too, and I will be glad when the Lord comes for his saints, whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I know everybody has their ideas about that, but we know he is returning. And and until that time, that day comes that he returns, we need to be busy. We need to be uh, faithful because the master has gone on a trip. Okay, the Lord is, had left the earth after he was crucified and resurrected, and he has taken a trip, and he has given us all responsibilities, and he, he's, he sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven. But there is a day when he is going to return, and when he is going to hold us accountable to what we have done with him and with what he has given us. Now, that may come during the Lord's literal return to this earth, or it may come when we go to meet him. Uh, but in either case, okay, there will be a time that we need will, will uh, be required to, to answer. And so what is it that you have done? And what is it that you're doing? And could you do more? There are some people and they don't want to go out and even sit in a parking lot and ask people if they come out of a store, uh, can I pray for you? Or, or something simple, or hand out a flyer and invite them to church, or but but, but do something, folks. Um, you know, one of the things that concerns me about the Christian church today is that uh, so many Christians are just into what they can get for themselves. They get together there and they they go to a church. They hear a good sermon. They 
uh, shake hands and smile and pat each other on the back, give each other hugs, which is, is all fine. And then they go home. But then Monday through Saturday, they're just existing, doing other things. They go to work. They do other things. But in the course of doing those other things, it's, they have forgotten about the Lord and about ministering and about sharing and about uh, souls. People are dying every day, folks. And, 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 and we're the ones that can snatch them from the gates of hell by bringing the word of God to them in one way or another. And folks, there are people today during the holidays when the suicide rate is higher, higher than at any other time of the year. And, and if someone would just walk up to them and tell them, I just want you to know that God loves you. Um, it, it might be all they need to keep them alive until uh, a, a seed maybe that's been sown in their heart could be watered by somebody and, and bring forth fruit and bring them into that relationship with Christ. I, I always tell the story that back in the day when uh, it was before I was in, in, in ministry, and I was in Houston, uh, and, and really going through a difficult time in my life. It was one of the hardest times uh, I, I ever experienced um, uh, emotionally and a lot of other ways. Just a lot of things were hap- had happened to me. And I remember driving down, was Westheimer Boulevard, as a matter of fact, and I was praying, and, and I had my shades on. And back in those days, we didn't have automatic windows. You rolled them up and rolled them down. And so I'm driving in my car. I've got my shades on. I make sure I get my sunglasses on because I'm crying, you know, a little bit. And I'm just saying, God, I don't know where you are. I know you're there, but you, if, you're, if you even care about me, Lord, just speak to me. Reveal yourself to me. Help me in some way. Lord, just, just show me that you're even there. And I'm praying and as I pray, this old gray pickup truck with primer, just gray primer, uh, start pulls up alongside me. And I looked over to my left, and there is this long-haired guy. I think he's full of tattoos, uh, uh, probably in his 30s, maybe early 40s. <clears throat> and just looked as mean as can be, really. And he, he looked like he was scowling at me. I mean, you know, he was looking right at me. And, and I had come to a place where I just was frustrated and angry and upset and hurt. And and I had had enough, and I thought, this guy wants to fight with me, and I've just had it, you know. And so I was ready. I wondered, what does this guy want? And down, I start to roll my window. His window is coming down, too, and here comes my window coming down. And I'm ready to just whatever, you know. If we're going to fight, we're going to fight, because I've just had it. And I didn't. I figured I must have cut the guy off or something. I wasn't sure what happened, but I roll the window down, and as I turn around, I start to say what I couldn't get the what out. I go, I get about that far, and the guy goes, "Hey," he says, "I just want to tell you, the Lord told me to tell you that He loves you," and I just froze, like, uh, 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 uh oh, oh, thank, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I just said thank you, and 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 I roll the window up. And his window rolls up, and he waves to me, and then he speeds on past me. And I just thought, thank you, God. What an God answered that prayer right there. But see, it was because a, a man that may not have had a lot of gifts, but he could say one thing: the Jesus loves you. And he took that one talent that that may have been all he had. And he replicated it and did something with it because those words gave me hope and gave me something to hang on to and and from with with that they were an anchor for me to hold on to the Lord and to get me back into a church where I needed to be and from there yeah uh, you know I, I moved on and progressed over into my life into ministry and and folks there are people out there today that need to know God loves them they need to hear it from somebody else. Um, they, they, they're, they're asking God to speak to them now. Is God gifted you with something? Uh, maybe you, you have the abilities to do something and you've used it for everything but the kingdom of God. Folks, I want to encourage you, okay? Don't sit on your talent. But if you've, God has given you five, make 10, okay, or more. If he's given you two, make four 
or more. If he's given you one, make two. But don't sit on your talent and do nothing. Okay? We have an impotent church today in this country. The majority of our churches are are, are impotent. They have talked a good game, but people open up their Bibles. They open up to the book of Acts and they see all the great miracles and things that have taken place. They walk into a church and instead of seeing miracles in life, they see nothing but deadness because there is no relationship. There is no power. The Spirit of God is not moving. There is no reality for those people. So they stay away from organized religion. And why is that happening? It's because too many Christians have sat on their talent, okay? And have they have not done anything. They have no desire or concern to replicate it. And folks, we, we the church at this point in time that we're living in now, in the end times, in a time where the world is going crazy because it lacks leadership. There doesn't seem to be a, any barometer for morality in this country anymore because the churches remain silent when it needs to speak out. Folks, we've got to get off of our tail ends and uh, and make sure that we're not sitting on our talents and that we're being effective in the kingdom of God. We can't. It can't be said that the the Christians in the last days were passive and did nothing. Folks, so I I hope that this blesses you and gives you something to think about to and to pray about. So let's let's pray and I hope that you will get into motion. Maybe God will quicken and maybe you'll take a list and write down some of the things that God has gifted you with to do and that you begin to uh get in motion. Don't just do it one time. Start making it a habit. And watch what happens. I learned something a long time ago, and I, it still applies today, and I still tell people this when I preach, and that is that if you tend to God's business, he will always take care of yours, okay? God is not going to neglect you while you take care of his business and of other people. But there are some Christians that become so consumed with themselves that they don't do anything for anybody else and they become self-focused and their needs are never met. Get your eyes off of yourself and begin to see what you can do for others and watch what God does for you. Amen. Well, I praise God. And so let's pray. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for your word. And I pray that um, you'll seal it to our hearts, Lord, and help us to walk in it. Make it real to us, Lord. You said your words are spirit in their life. And I pray that these will be life-giving words. They will create something within the spirit of every person that's listening live now, that will be listening on YouTube later, and that will be coming on to Facebook Live later to hear this message, Lord. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, a couple of quick announcements. If you're watching me this evening, on Facebook, okay, Facebook Live. Do me a favor, please like the message and share it, folks. Hit the share button. The reason I say that is this, okay? There are friends that you have, many friends on your Facebook page, and they're not on my Facebook page, but they're on yours. And if this message has blessed you, share the message with your other friends because there's somebody on your friend list that needs to hear this tonight. And it may be the thing that breaks them open and helps them, just like the guy that drove by in that pickup truck and he had the right word for the right moment for me. Uh, you can do the same thing. And in doing that, you'll help us to get the gospel all around the world. And that's what we're doing. There are people that, that watch this program. Uh, there are celebrities that watch it. I can name names right now of people that, that, that watch. And um, there are... Uh, people in Pakistan and in Asia and in other countries that are watching that come on and watch the message. Uh, not all of them hit the like button and none of them hit the share button. But when I finish and I look at the numbers of people, sometimes there is over 100 people that are watching. Okay, so we're getting the word of God out and only God knows who's listening. And I know some of these people take the word and they probably uh, uh, minister the, the that, and that's good, and that's fine, and that's what we want. We want to get the true gospel out to others, okay? And if you notice, I never ask for money. 
I don't take offerings. I don't ask for you to mail a check to our, our address and to our ministry, to End Time Ministries or, any, or anything else. Okay, my concern is that you contribute in the way that I'm asking now. If you are watching on YouTube, okay, go to the subscribe button and subscribe and you'll get messages like this. But more important even than that, folks, the more subscriptions that I get on YouTube, the algorithms will take my messages and actually send them out to other people all over the world that are interested in these type of topics, the things of God, the, the things that we're talking about. And, and people will not have to look up my name because there are a lot of people who don't know who I am. And they won't have to look up a title, but the messages will go out to them automatically. But for that to happen, I need to get a lot of subscriptions. And folks, I'm just starting YouTube. I'm just starting to transfer messages over there now. And I need your help. And if you're interested, if you this mess, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, and maybe you're you're uh, out here in Arizona or you're in California somewhere or, or in another state, folks, go on to YouTube. If you look at my name right there, okay, Misha Softier, you can just simply hit the search button, or type in Misha Softier, and you'll see probably 160, 170 messages. You don't have to listen to them all. Just subscribe and like some of the ones that you want to listen to. And if you'll do that, it'll be a blessing. Or you can go to End Time Ministries uh, and you can uh, catch me there. Yeah, I, I would put End Time Ministries with Misha Softier because there's lots of End Time Ministries. But there's not any other End Time Ministries with Misha Softier. So listen, these are important announcements uh, and I really would appreciate it. I really want to get this moving. There's other opportunities. I met a brother um, on a uh, uh, Cardinal uh, group page uh, for a football, Cardinal fo football group page that happens to uh, have a number of radio stations, and he we have talked, and he has offered to put my messages on the radio at no cost to our ministry, which is a huge blessing. Well, I'm sure we'll contribute something. And um, so we are in discussion about that now. And uh, I pray, pray God blesses them. But again, this is an opportunity to get our uh, the, uh, the message that God has given us out all over the world. And I understand that they're broadcasting in at least 20, I think he said 22 countries uh, right now. And again, it's another opportunity. And I try to use all the methods and media that I can. Those of you that know me know I've written two book, published books uh, and I'm written my, writing my third right now. Our Barnes & Noble here has them on their shelves and uh, they're uh, being sold all over the world. Uh, but besides written media, I use social media like Facebook and like YouTube. And on top of that, I minister and I speak in a number of churches, uh, at least one here in Yuma and... and um, uh, three or four in, in California, and teach also groups of pastors. So I, I'm doing everything that I can do. This is not to pat me on the head and say, you're doing a good job. I'm not looking for approval, but I'm letting you know that I'm out here working hard to try to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out because there are so many in pulpits today that don't preach the gospel. They preach everything but the true gospel of Jesus Christ. But I've been faithful to this. I, I've um, not compromised the Word of God in any way. And so you uh, you can help me. I can't do this by myself, but with a little bit of support, if you'll please just sign in. All this time I've been talking, you could have already gone on to YouTube and subscribed and be done with it. All right, so I would really appreciate it if you'll do that. I've enjoyed ministering to you and sharing with you this evening. You know what I always say, Keep your feet on the ground. Keep your head to the sky. Amen. And I will see you, God willing, next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Mountain Time here in Arizona and 7 p.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time in California. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.